Welcome back to the Grim Art of Cooking. Today we're going to go in and do some of our homemade cured bacon. So well, I'll go over all the basics of what we're using and how we're doing it and how long we're doing it and some of the why we're doing it. So from there on, we're going to clean up this pork belly just a little bit. We'll go over what we're using for cured ingredients. We do a dry cure at the house for our bacon, not a wet cure, and I'll explain that as I'm putting it all together. So if you'll bear with me, we'll get a little closer so you can see what we're doing and we'll be set to go in a second. All right, so like I just said, we dry cure our bacon here at the house. We've done both wet cure and dry cure. We found we kind of like the flavor profile of the dry cure a little better. I've also learned over time, one I read it and two, it proved itself to me that dry cure versus wet cure. When you're frying your bacon up, dry cure doesn't curl up as much when you cook it. Wet cure does curl a lot more. So for those of you that have your bacon curling up when you're cooking it that you bought the store, it's because they wet cured it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this up a little bit. This bacon still has the skin still on it. I leave the skin on it during most of the curing process, all the way up through the smoking. Once we finish the smoking, that's when I take the skin off and I'll show you how I do that. But I don't need to cure some of this excess skin on here. And this little extra bit of fat that's not going to do me any good. So we're just going to trim it up a little bit. in a couple spots. I do recommend a very sharp knife because the bacon skin is kind of tough to cut. This is approximately 10 pounds for my curing mix. I use a third cup for about four to six pounds of bacon. I use a third of a cup of sugar. I do equal parts of mine. You may find some recipes that call for a little more of one than the other. You can do brown sugar instead of white sugar. We just like making ours consistent. So we kind of stick with just the white sugar for ours. Now I have this broken down. Two pieces, one per each of my bags. I have another bag sitting beside me here. We have a third cup sugar. We have a third cup each for our we use kosher salt. You can use sea salt. You can use kosher salt. There's several others you can use. I do not recommend table salt. It does not work very well. So you kind of want the salts to have a little more of the mineral to them. They seem to work better. So to start out, we'll take our bag. We put in our third cup of sugar. Our third cup of kosher salt and then for each of this this is insta cure number two number two is for the dry curing it will work for a wet cure but it's more for a dry cure number one cure is what we use for our wet cures they're both the same thing they're also called prog powder at times so all I'm going to do shake this around get it mixed up Set this down. Try and get my bag open again. And then feed this in. Now this is starting to feel like it may become a new sport called bacon wrestling. Now I'm going to lightly seal this up. We'll reseal it again once we're done here. <coughs> but now that it's in, we're going to try to make sure the whole thing is totally dusted and coated.
Once we have all that covered, we try and get our curing stuff underneath and shuffle this down to the bottom. Make sure it's all nice and flat again. Burp our bag and seal it up. Now, we put this on a bottom shelf in my curing fridge. It'll sit there for about 72 hours. Then we'll pull it, we'll dry it for overnight, and then we'll put it in some smoke, and then we'll go from there. All right, we have our smoker ready, so we can put our bacon on to get it smoked up and cured that finish off with that little kiss of mesquite smoke. That's what we're using today. I do have some apple smoked wood too, but we're running with mesquite, it's one of our favorites. So it's only gonna go on for about half hour to 45 minutes just to get that kiss of smoke on there. Now this was pulled out of the bags, rinsed all the salt off, and then set in the fridge, open face like this, to dry for overnight to two days. So this is two days, that's why it's got a little darker. That shiny look on the bacon is called the pellicle. That helps seal it up and get the smoke stuck to it from when we go to get ready to finish it off. So give me a second, I'll position to get the smoker finished off already and we'll get it all loaded up. All right, we're ready to put it on the smoker. We're gonna lay it in. I put it in skin side up. Because once we get done smoking it, I'll skin it off and then we'll fridge it for long enough to make it nice and firm again. And then we can slice it and have it however we want or leave it whole. Okay, we've brought the meat in from the smoker. As you can see, it's got some nice color to it. But you also see it's not truly cooked. Okay, so all we did is we wanted to smoke it. See, some of this is really nice and soft. Now, some of these, they have the huge folds like this. I'll take the skin off of them, but I'm going to leave them whole and package them that way. This way, I can either use it whole for like when we do our bacon, pineapple tacos and stuff like that. I want to slow cook it or I want to slow cook it and then cut it into big sections for making like bacon sections for making a big thick steak cut into like a bacon sandwich um, or I can cube it to where we do our lazy I'll call it my lazy man's uh, bacon burnt ends and a barbecue sauce and we'll do that for one of the recipes coming up here but right now I'm going to go ahead and finish what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it sometimes a skinny knife helps Sometimes actually even a big old skinner works fairly well. So all I'm gonna do is find the corner, hook the knife under, get it started. Once I have it started, I can start peeling it up. I'll roll it under my finger, because the skin will actually help protect. Then just little slices. And it comes right off. Now, after I'm done with this, this one and at least one more of these that I think will make good slicers into rashers for bacon, what we'll do is I'll put it back into the refrigerator and even maybe the freezer. And I'll get it set up to where it's very firm and nice and solid to go through the slicer. That way it goes through the slicer a lot easier. Now, every now and then we save the skins off of these. They go good for adding to like ham and bean soup because of all the collagens and things in them. They actually add a little bit of a thickener for stuff like that. Plus it adds that great smoky flavor just like you would if you added a ham hock. And then what little meat I'm actually leaving on here it will fall off and add into whatever we're making for our soups and stuff like that. So we've almost got this one. You can see it goes fairly quick. It goes easy. Sometimes a smaller knife is a little easier. You can make smaller flicks to get a little closer. That's why I have them both out. And sometimes getting through those creases like in this one and this one right here, the little knife works a little better for getting through that area. There we go, and that's one skin off. 
one down, four to go. So we'll get these finished off. I hope you've enjoyed how we cure and make our own homemade bacon. We'll get some photos posted up with this and show you some of the sliced product afterwards. Thanks for watching.